Hello friends, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com. Today I want to talk to you about how people make excuses for lack of results. How many times have you seen people make excuses for the, the wealthy? Well, they got their, they must have cheated people. They must have done this. They must have done that. Making excuses. Ecclesiastes 4, 5 through 6 says this, The fool foldeth his hands together and eateth his own flesh. Better is a handful with quietness than both the hands full with travail and vexation of spirit. Those verses go together. See, the foolish person looks at somebody successful and they say, well, they, they're workaholics. They're doing this. They're doing that. Meanwhile, these people are working eight hour days, 10 hour days sometimes to scrape by. They're not even having any kind of abundance. But they look at the successful person and say, well, you know, it's better just to have a little bit with quietness than have all that travail and vexation of spirit those people have. I mean, look at all the trouble they have and all they're working so hard and they just spend all these long hours and it's better just to have a little bit. As if to presume that having less and slothfulness and laziness is acceptable and to make excuses for it. This idea that this labor is just just toiling for no reason and I'd rather just do less and have little with quietness. Have you seen poor people? I mean, do poor people really think about this? I grew up poor. There was constant strife, enmity, arguments, and problems. Yes, there were some people that got along pretty well, but there's always issues. And you know what it's about? Money. For the person that claims they just need a little bit, only a handful with quietness, and yet they're constantly having arguments and struggles and travails and vexations of spirit because they don't have enough. Instead of looking and making excuses for why you don't have enough, why don't you try to follow what the wealthy people have done? What do they do differently? The example I always give is that CEOs, people who've achieved the top in corporations, not necessarily founders, but founders as well, of course, they read 60 times more than the average person. That right there should be an indication of something they do differently than the average person and middle class and poor person does. So maybe that's something to consider. Start looking at what do they do differently how do they approach life differently? You know, Donald Trump, in one of his interviews, I believe it was, when he was running for president, people mentioned about how he was, he got a loan, and that's how he made all his money and everything. And he made this quote that people criticized and laughed about, but it made me really think. He said this, I just had a small $1 million loan from his father and people laugh a million dollars you call that small but think of that think of the the mentality this man has that's gotten him to billions of dollars because the average person if they had a million dollar loan they would absolutely invest it poorly and lose it if they inherited a hundred million dollars or whatever trump inherited they would spend it all and be broke probably bankrupt after a few years and we know that for a fact because we see it with lotto winners. It happens all the time. They get into a worse position in life than they were when they came in with no money because of winning the lotto. They get killed. They get into drug habits. They spend all their money. They buy a big, huge house, and then they can't afford the property taxes, and they get it foreclosed on. All kinds of disasters. That's what the average person would do if they inherit any kind of money. But Trump's $1 million comment was very interesting. It doesn't matter whether you like him or not. This is just an interesting way. It lets you view the mentality of billionaires. He looks at a million dollars as a small loan. Think of that mentality. He's thinking big, billions, and other people are criticizing that. But what you should do is look at what these billionaires do and what are they thinking differently? How are they approaching money differently? You think a million dollars, you're thinking, oh, it's the biggest unreachable, unattainable amount, because it's not. 
Are you like Trump where he's saying, I had a small $1 million loan. Think of the difference in mentality when you approach things big and you think big and you dream big and you're expecting big things out of life compared to the person who's expecting little and just a handful with quietness. Because I want to tell you, I've been extremely poor and I've had a great success and blessings. And one of the things I noticed is it is so much easier to have the, the problems you have, the different types of problems you have when you have wealth than it is when you're poor. Because you have all kinds of problems when you're poor, but you have little options because you have no money. So you're always struggling and you're paying this and well, I got to skip this thing because I got to pay this payment over here and all this stuff. And you pretend like everything is going well and you're content and you have just a handful of quietness, but really you have travail and constant vexation of spirit. The very thing that you attribute to the wealthy, attribute to the rich, and that's what you have in your life constantly. Now, this isn't to criticize poor people because I was very poor and I know what it's like. It's to get you to expand your thinking. Think of things differently. Instead of, and it doesn't matter about personalities. If you look at wealthy people, I don't like their personality. I don't like the way they do this. And that. it doesn't matter about any of that. We're just talking about in business and success and financial wisdom. Look at these people. What are they doing differently than you? When they get money, what do they do? Notice how Trump got a $1 million loan, a small $1 million loan, and he got it for an investment. He didn't get a small $1 million loan so he can go buy a car or go buy a house or do this and that and buy consumable goods. You have a credit card. What do you, what have you put on your credit card recently? Television, food even? I mean, you're putting food on your credit card. I'm not talking about if you're paying it off at the end of the, the month because you're getting credits and points and miles and things like that. But if you're doing that because, just to get by, and you're putting consumer goods and food and all these things on your credit card and you're using credit to just exist and here's a wealthy person using credit to build more wealth more money and have that wealth continue on forever and ever this is very important how are you approaching money See, when you look at money and you think, well, you know, those rich people, it sure is a lot harder when you're rich. You know, I remember when I was a kid growing up, there was that more money, more problems. That was the mentality. And yet, when I had more money, I had less problems. There were problems, no question, but you had more solutions for those problems. When you're poor and all you do is work a job, you don't have a business, you don't have anything going on for you except for somebody else telling you how many hours you can work and how much money you can get and you can't pay your bills what do you do you start selling the few possessions you have well that's a good start but then what do you do you have limited options because you have lack and you have constant travails i remember being poor i remember moving into a house and not being able to pay the electricity and having no electricity for a month in the middle of May because I couldn't afford, I spent everything I could just to move into that place. I know what it's like to have. That is not fun. And any of the problems you attribute to wealth are way less of a problem than all the endless constant nonsense and drama and struggle and travail and vexation of spirit that goes along with poverty. And even middle class status, because they're always wanting something else. The middle class have a different issue where they're always wanting to, to look bigger than they are. So they want to have the appearance of wealth. And they go out and they get themselves into all kinds of debt to have a, the biggest house, more than they can afford. The biggest car, more than they can afford. Trying to impress people. Well, I'm going to get this Mercedes. Well, do you like Mercedes? Well, no, but, you know, it, it, looks, it looks better. It gives me a better appearance of wealth and success. No, it doesn't. No one cares. Over the years, I've been very blessed. And I've known a lot of people who've been very blessed who could buy anything. And yet some of them are driving Ford F-150s. They're driving regular cars. They live in a modest house. When you have true wealth, 
you just buy whatever you want. You don't have to buy things to impress other people because you, you've gained enough wisdom, hopefully, to realize that no one cares and to realize that it, you shouldn't care yourself what other people think about your possessions or lack thereof. It doesn't matter. In the end, you have to answer to God and you have to answer to your family for what you're, the choices you're making. If you're making unwise choices and getting into debt for consumer goods and things of that nature, what are you doing? Make wise investments. Invest. Have your money work for you and do things for you. So while you're sleeping, your money's out there working for you. You can invest in companies. You can start your own business, which is what I would suggest for many people. And you don't have to have this great big multinational company. You can have a small little company, but it could provide you enough to be very, very, very comfortable and truly have not a handful with quietness, but an overflowing abundance with quietness, that quietness of spirit. And when you have an abundance, you can help other people who only have a handful. You can help them become better, help them become more and do more. And then in turn, when they start creating an abundance, they can help other people. And that just kind of spreads. But you can't do it when you're the one with only a handful, only enough for you and yours, not enough for anyone else, and not even caring to help anyone else. That mentality is truly vexation of spirit. And all the travail that goes with poverty is not good. And to claim otherwise, to pretend like, well, you know, they just, they have all those problems. I don't need all those problems that comes with money. Those problems that come with money, many of those are self-caused. And you have those exact same problems when you don't have money, except you have even more of them and you have less options to resolve those problems. It's the old saying, I've been poor and I've been rich and rich is better. It's just that simple. Stop thinking limiting thoughts, thinking lack, thinking handful with quietness and start thinking an abundance. That you deserve an abundance because you're going to work hard, you're going to listen to the voice of the Spirit, you're going to be have wisdom and be taught to profit. That's the whole name I've given to my website and this mentality of being taught to profit. God giving you witty inventions. He gives you the power to get wealth. He teaches you to profit. When you'll listen and start acting, and that's the biggest thing, because you can listen, you can write down good ideas and have all these billion dollar thoughts, but if you don't do anything with them, they're worth nothing. But when you start acting and you stop being jealous of rich people and start looking, what are they doing differently? And you know what? If you ask some of them, they might just tell you what they do differently. And you'd be surprised at some of the stuff they do that is very different from the average poor middle class person. And it's the difference between being poor and middle class and being rich. And you'll never get to that rich side if you don't do the things they do. So my friends, I pray this has been a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.